Hi, welcome to another Dealer Coffee Break. My name is Sean Lankford. I'm joined today with Piers Flood and Richard Lai. We're on the technical team with Dooley Yachts. Um, today's coffee break, we're going to cover diesel electric versus conventional drive. Richard, you're going to be diesel electric. Piers, you're going to be conventional drive. Sell it to me. What's so good about diesel electric? In a nutshell, it's more efficient to use. Um, that's basically because your uh, generator sets that you're using to drive your main motor, which is, uh, consequently drives your main shaft, they're going to be running at a higher load, which means they're burning fuel efficiently throughout the rev range for that vessel, compared to a conventional drive where your engine at the equivalent RPM would not be at a high enough load and therefore burning, potentially burning more fuel. Right. Okay. So that's the basic side of it. There's also the other um, concept of the fact that a diesel electric system is made up of multiple components and because they're not physically linked, mm. you can spread that around the vessel. Mm. So you don't need as big a machinery space. Okay. Okay. So it's a lot easier to move that around and fit component parts around the boat. Mm -hmm. And then there's the third one, redundancy. Your conventional uh, drive is either going to be a single engine or driving a single shaft or a twin engine driving a twin shaft. You lose that or one of those engines, you're either completely dead in the water or you're running the one engine train in the shaft. Where with a diesel electric setup, you've got multiple generators, you not only feeding your main motor, but also feeding your hotel services as well. If you lose one, you have or lose two even, you're still moving through the water. Good point. And you can still operate your boat to the redundancy. So cost, space and design on board, redundancy. Yeah, okay. In a nutshell. Like it. Piers, can you argue with that? It, it's a hard one to counter, Richard. But, um, <laughs> Conventional drive's been around for a really long time, so most engineers, most shipyards, most captains understand it. Yeah. It's a fairly simple setup. You're not dealing with mechanical, electrical, conversion AC to DC, etc. Um, less equipment. So yes, diesel prime mover, which would be the same, gearbox, shaft line, propeller. Fairly simple. And it's been around so long now the designs are pretty much optimised. So yes, you don't get the efficiency gains you do with running diesel electric, optimising your prime movers all the time, but the actual design of the conventional shaft line is pretty much optimised now for efficiency. So uh, yeah, that, 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 that would be my stated sales. But wouldn't you say though, from an operator's point of view, a diesel engine is a diesel engine. So from the engineers maintaining that engine, nothing changes. Yeah, I'd agree with that, nothing changes. But then you've got the gearbox in a conventional drive, fairly well understood, fairly simple piece of machinery. They're not foolproof, they do grenade from time to time, yeah. but generally they're well understood. And then shaft line, basically, long piece of metal going yeah. out the back of the boat to a propeller. You know, you go and have a problem with that. You do have the issue, as you said, you don't have the redundancy, but pretty much every shipyard around the world can say, right, we can deal with that, we understand it. Diesel electric, you have less options. So, mm. in my mind, there, there's a lot to be said for conventional drive. Okay. Let's look at the cost side of things. So, diesel electric. Yeah. It's going to be a little bit more expensive, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you're, you're right. The, the, the upfront cost of a diesel electric system is going to be a lot more expensive than any conventional uh, propulsion system you fit on board your yacht. It's as simple as that. There's more component parts. Mm. So the cost is going to be a lot more. Um, diesel electric has been around for a long time in certain forms. Um, I won't say how old I am, but a long, long time ago <laughs> I sailed on a diesel electric ship, DC, um, and she was built in the 50s. So yes, it's been around a long time. But technology's changed since then, and the modern systems, um, there's a lot involved uh, for design of the systems, and a lot of engine manufacturers now are pushing to design the systems themselves. Mm. So rather integrating a generator from one manufacturer, a motor from another manufacturer, a switchboard from another manufacturer and so forth, 
they are trying to bring all that in house. So therefore, their research and the and the cost then goes up. Yeah. So the initial outlay, yes, is expensive compared yeah. to conventional drives. Right. Piers, obviously, the cost is a bit less with. Uh, yeah, generally we see significant changes, you know, lower costs for conventional drive. Um, but as Richard said, with diesel electric, those efficiency gains you get, it might take a number of years to get your payback, but burning less fuel means less money on bunkers. But also, and you know, I'm beginning to be an advocate for diesel electric here, you've got the advantages that you can put the equipment on diesel electric in different compartments, which leads on to designing your hull in a more efficient way, perhaps. So optimizing the hull form, and again, reducing fuel consumption through the water. Right. Um, and then becoming, as Rich is convincing me to be a diesel electric advocate, you've got that indefinable value to the owner of this beautiful yacht they would be building. Mm. The flexibility with diesel electric of being able to put machinery in different departments optimizes the internal volume for use for the client. Yeah. So they can potentially build a potentially much more voluminous boat or a better layout mm. that meets their quality requirements. And, and that's perhaps something you can't put a financial value on, but to a client means an awful lot. Yeah, okay. So environmental is obviously the key word at the moment. Which one of these systems is more environmentally friendly? You know, obviously diesel electric uh, and conventional are using diesel. So, yeah, but uh, is there is there a benefit to either one? Only on the fuel burn, I would say personally, because the engine itself has to comply to the latest regulations. So there's no getting around um, those requirements. That both those engines will comply to the relevant uh, requirements to the kill lay date of the vessel, obviously. Mm. Um, so it's only really on the quantity of fuel you're burning, and you're burning it more efficiently. And that's what gives you your environmental advantage, shall we say, over a conventional drive. Yeah. Okay. Piers, would you agree with that? Definitely, I would say, environmentally, you know, big tick in the box of diesel electric. You can optimise the generator sets, the output, so you're as efficient as you could possibly be. Those potential hull optimization designs, etc. So environmentally, I think operationally, big tick in the box. Mm. But, and, and this is the same issue I think we face with electric cars, operationally much more efficient than traditional vehicles. Mm. But when you look at diesel electric propulsion, there's more machinery in there, mm. more switchboards, more metal, more cabling, more rubber, more insulation. So if you look at it holistically, the whole cost of the project and the impact on the environment, there's perhaps more question mark over diesel electric as yeah. overall, whether it yeah. is more environmentally efficient or not. Okay. All right. Yeah, I agree with that. So after that, Piers, uh, a new build, would you be advising diesel electric? I think like so many of these questions we come across, it, it's really down to the client. What do they want? Do they want perhaps something conventional that's well known, easy to maintain? Perhaps the designs are now optimized at this stage. Or do they want perhaps something that can give them the flexibility in the interior layout, the whole form, and operationally tick a big tick in the environmental box? Mm. So I think it's, it's really down to client, client choice. Yeah. And it also um, comes down to the size of the vessel. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, diesel electric. You're getting down to the small end of the market, you know, yeah. you're 40 metres, you're 44 metres and so forth. The amount of equipment you've got to then try and put into potentially one machinery space then becomes an issue. Yeah. Or it can become very much an, an issue because you haven't got the room to fit that equipment in. Yeah. Uh, I know a lot of engine manufacturers are looking into this um, and they are coming up with ideas, but it's restricting your, the room in the engine room for being able to maintain the equipment when it's in there. They'll get it in, but working on it is, becomes an issue. So yeah. there are pros and cons of actually the size of the vessel, should we say, and actually be able to have this as an option. Yeah, okay, good. All right, thanks gentlemen. And thank you for joining us on our coffee break today. Um, we look forward to catching up with you on the next one. Thanks a lot.